What are you doing in here? Hey? What's he doing in here? Look, I'm here doing some work. He's using my bleating tools again. Look. I don't know how you're working this mess. I'm trying to organise it. Unbelievable. Of that. What do you mean? I know where everything is there. All my tools are nicely laid out, as you can see. Look, all laid out lovely. Yeah. The times I've gone in here and these have been stuck up behind this cupboard here, and I can't open the drawer. But at least I know where it all is. There is an order there, so keep out of there. Get back into the polytunnel and stop oh, using my bleating tools. Where's what? this come from? Will you give it to me? Stop stroking it, it's not a cat. Right, so he says he ain't paying rent in the polytunnel because the roof's leaking. He reckons anything that's in there over seven days suddenly becomes his property. Yeah? Yeah. He's talking about the RDs, the two RDs that are there. And he's given me this out of his loads of spares, which is nice, okay, fair enough. But he reckons that voids him from rent or anything. So then he comes in here and says that gives him the right to use all my tools. What do you reckon? Give it the nail on the head there. Yeah, well, okay then. So you're not getting paid for this. This is out of his stock. I've got to change this on the Mondeo. As you know, with the folding mirrors and stuff, with that modification we made from uh, Chaz Coombs, uh, these now fold in, but this one stopped working. And I think it happened when it was frosty out where the motors had sort of seized up or whether this one might have been a little bit weak on my passenger side. So rather than mess about and change the internals of the motor, I'm just going to change the whole unit. But that means taking off the internal trim to the door and there's three, what are these Torx bits, aren't they? Yeah. They look like T30s, T25s, T30s or something like that. Yeah. Undo them three bolts, pull the plug out and take the whole thing off. But this has got a different colour cover on it. Now, how do these actually come off? Get that out of there. Under there, you'll find the box of uh, trim tools. So get them out, open them up there. I've got my own videos. Hey? I can't run your channel as well as mine. Well, I'm just showing you, aren't I? I've taught you everything you know. So I've got this trim kit here. That's the same as mine. Uh, you actually, I purchased it first and I think you copied me actually, to be honest with you. So what one are we going to need here? I've just got to get under there. I'll show you that one. Right, so what do we do here? We just prise it up, don't we? Normally people do this with a screwdriver, you see, but we're using plastic against plastic, so hopefully there shouldn't be any damage. Where normally we'd stick a screwdriver in there and we damage the front of it, so there you go. And that's as simple as that. So this, I'll tell you what, you can keep that bit, you can have that, how about that? Oh, cheers. And if you can just see on the inside there, that come off the top way like that. So on the top there, there is no clips, as you can see. The clips are actually down, down the back, uh, down the bottom, and one round the inside there. So prising along the top there just gives you enough tension to be able to ping that off like that. So that's exactly what we've done there. Right, so that's that. It looks like there was one down the bottom there. But look there, look, it's broken off there. See the bit of plastic there, look. There might've been one down the bottom there, but apart from the top, I don't think there was any there. There's no broken bits though. No, there's no broken bits there. Right, okay then. So I'm gonna let you carry on then. He's working on that chainsaw, that, no, not a chainsaw, what is it? This car. MS400, isn't it? TS400 disc cutter, which you, if you want to see that refurbished, it's not refurbished, it's just uh, tidied it up. He got it very cheap, he's made it look a bit decent now and he'd be able to ask top dollar for that because we've actually used it, he's servicing the carbon and it actually works fine. But go to his channel, Project Man, to find that one. Right, see you later. Get tidied up in there. <sighs> Get tidied up, it was blinking tidy. Anyway, I had a couple of good ideas on my previous uh, video. One was the engine for the Reliant Regal, as you know, I bought the engine stand and the bolts from this that bolt onto there are Imperial. And a couple of you made the suggestion, well, why not bolt an engine plate on the back and then you can use metric. Actually, right, I've actually got the engine plate here, look. I, I keep forgetting I've got stuff, you see. Oh, there it is there, look. So I've, all I've got to do is to bolt that engine plate back onto the engine using the original bolts. And then I've got any hole here or any four holes here I can use to bolt this plate to the actual frame. So yes, I did. I've got the gear, but after such a long time, I forget, you see. So that's that. And as far as the Vauxhall Vectra is concerned, Sharon's car, you know I did the uh, coolant test on that, and when I watched the video back, I thought, that's not blue, is it? That's green on its way to yellow. And I didn't say anything, but a lot of you did pick up on that in the uh, comment section as well. I think I was in a little bit of a denial, actually, that it was going green. Uh, it was green instead of the blue, the vivid blue that it was when I first put it on. So I am aware of that, yes, and sometime in the future, we will probably be doing the head gasket on 
the Vauxhall Vectra. Now, a lot of you might say, well, it's not worth it, it's an old car, blah, blah, blah. Sharon loves it for some reason. So that's the reason why, and it come from one owner from new, and it was a member of the family, and at the end of the day, if you put it into a garage to do all this sort of stuff, no, of course you would, you'd, you'd probably scrap it because the, the the repair costs. But because we do it ourselves, and we maintain it and keep it going, and we know the history of it, it's a great car to have, and she loves it. If she didn't like it, then I would probably out it, but it gives me video content, it gives you something to watch, and at the end of the day, I don't mind doing it, because I'm learning as well, because I've never done a head gasket on a Vauxhall Vectra petrol 1800, so that'll be another little job. And also the headlining, as you probably remember, we had a, a foul on that, but uh, I know people said about this, that, the other, and, I'm, I've ordered some new cloth. I wanted to see, because every time I went to YouTube to have a look at it, do a headlining, there wasn't a foul. Everyone showed a, a, a perfect example. And in the real life world, it wasn't a perfect example, as you see, with the poorest headlining that I've got, with that foam back. That's what happens is with that headlining, the foam backing deteriorates, and that's when it drops down and causes that sort of tent effect. And using that glue out of the nozzle like I did, although I've seen other people use it successfully, with that type of headlining, it just soaked through. Now, I've gone to the car now. If you look at it now, I'll show you it a bit later on maybe when I'm out the front, that it's actually stuck up where I put it, but all the glue's come through because it's so thin. So I have ordered some new headlining for that. We're gonna be taking the whole plastic thing out, scrubbing it down, and re-putting on new headlining. It's not the correct headlining. To buy a new headlining complete is about 200 odd quid, over well, 250, 290 uh, quid, or whatever like that, something like that. But uh, I've just ordered some, um, generic headlining, which is a similar sort of colour, and we'll apply it off the car in a different video. Anyway, let's get out the front to the Mondeo. Let's fit this, because I want this working again. See you out the front. All right, okay, we're out the front here now, and I'll just show you the headlining. A lot of people, well, one person, actually, not a lot of people. One person did ask, what does it look like after it's uh, dried off and that? So let me just show you that. And you remember how tent tenty it was before? Now, it has gone up, as you can see, look. So, I mean, this is the part I didn't do over this side. But over there, it did stick up. But can you see the patches it's left left of the, the glue, where the glue is uh, soaked through sort of thing? But uh, it's not as, as embarrassing now, but obviously you couldn't do that and leave it like that. So we're going to take the whole of this headlining out, this big plastic sheet, bring it out, take all that off, and then uh, actually refit it with new headlining. That's the plan anyway, and I hope to capture that all on video so you can see how easy it is. It's a common thing on these Vauxhall Vectras because the sponge backing they use on this headlining deteriorates and then it just crumbles away, and that's when you're left with that sort of Bedouin tent effect. And look, Khan, he's a blinking good clean out. Look at the state of it, look. Right, okay, so. Old Crappit Man's car's here. There's the wheels he uh, started to refurbish, as you can remember. Was this one that one was done? Yeah, we've done the wheel there, as you can see, but uh, you still got to do the centre caps there, which are a bit, bit naff, but uh, the wheels look a lot better now than what they used to. And, uh, yeah, so with these uh, wing mirrors, they fold in, but after fitting the relay that Chaz Coombs supplied us. And my one over here now, if you see, that when I go to open the door now, this one hardly moves. Yeah, see, it only comes out a little bit, look, so it should come out to there. And all we've got to do, I think, is take this internal trim off here, which should hopefully just ping off. Let me go get my tools. All right, okay, let's just get in here. Put them down there. I've got a bit of a bad knee at the moment. All right, anyway, let's get that trim tool out that we had before, and just sort of just try and prise this forward. Again, I've never had one of these off before. Gary has, but I haven't. Oh, there we go. Oh, I think there's a screw in there. So as you can see, there's a little plug there, look, so there's a little screw to come out of there. So let me just try and look that out. There we go. Tiny little clip like that. And I don't know if there's an easier way of getting out or not, but uh, we've got it out anyway. And inside there's a little Phillips screwdriver piece. So really, I suppose the way to do this is to undo this first and then pop the clip off. So we're learning as we go along. All right, okay. There we go, so there you go. That's what you got there. So you've got one metal clip at the top there, which just pings out, and the other one is the screw there. So there's our three screws there. One, two, three. And there's our three screws there, one, two, and the third one is actually outside there 
on the actual inside of the door trim there. So I'm going to undo them now. There's the electrical connector down there. So there's a good chance I may have to also undo these couple of screws here and maybe screw cap under there as well, just so I can leave this door panel forward to gain access to that. So I'm going to put you on a bit of time lapse for that and I'll see you in a minute. Right, so these main three bolts here were T25s. I also had to undo a Phillips screw at the bottom of the door panel as well, just to enable me to pull this out. And then that little plastic lug at the top there on that clip, you push that in and then you're able to lift this up. This connector or the other half of this connector is actually fixed in behind here, so it's not floating. Right, so hopefully we can get this out now. Like that. So all we have to do is to pop off the blue cover here and also take the light bulb out here as well. And if I remember rightly, there was a way to do that. Um, I think we're going to take this cover off first and have a look in there. All right, so knowing what we know now, we can just put this little plastic clip in there, in the top, ping that up like that. And it should just ping off. Here we go. Two little bits on the bottom there. I think the one on the other one was missing, but uh, one there and nothing along the top there. So that is how they actually come. So that's that out. And what I need to get out as well is the light fitting here because that other light fitting hasn't got one in. So if I remember right, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Or you can go through the end here apparently and reach it that way. Yeah, there we go. I'll show it when I get it out. There you go. Now, a lot of people, what they'll try to do with these type of fittings is from the surface, prise them this way, and all you're prising against is a little plastic lip there, and you're gonna break this, and a lot of people do break these by trying to prise these out this way. Just pop the back off, go through that hole there, and then push upon that plastic spring in there, and then out she pops, as you can see there. Disconnect the two terminals here, little connector, push the tab in, and then pull it out. There we go. So that's the old one now. Might be serviceable, I don't know, but uh, we're putting that to one side. So I'll get the replacement. And they've actually left the bulb holder in this one, look. <laughs> so I can probably just leave that one there. And then just slide this back in under there. And just literally just pop that clip back in like that. And that's it, the job done. That's the lamp back in the new fitting. This is our blue cover now, which should hopefully just clip straight into our light fitting. There we go. No tools needed there. So I'll just push this back through now, plug it in and uh, bolt it back up. So let's do that now. Right, so as I say, looking down here, can you see that connector down there? And that's the plug where it plugs into. And it is fixed, or it should be fixed anyway. And you just literally just drop it back in until it clicks in. There you go. And that's it. So we've been in there now. That can just go back over there like that. There's a little torque screw to go back in there. This again is a T25. So just zoom that in, like that. And we've got that little plastic cap to go back on there as well. Again, terrible these little caps, but uh, there you go. It's got a flat and the flat goes towards the top, in case you're fiddling about in there, because it is awkward. Right, okay, that's that in. We've got our little Phillips screws around the side here. We've got two to go in there, one in there, one in there. So just nip them up. So we didn't have to take the whole of the uh, door off panel, which was handy. And we did lose some one at the bottom there, which apparently has dropped out. So that dropped out apparently. So where did that go? I saw that. So the little one at the bottom. Right, so that's it, door panel 
back on. And then we've got our final bit, which is this little bracket here with that little plug screw goes into that little lug there. So I've just started that screw off first. So I know I'm in the right place. Once I've got that in, just hit that in. And now I can do that screw up completely. There we go. That's that back on. Finish off of our little plastic cap. And again, there's a little slot in that at the top. And that's where that little line at the top of that one lines up. So the little slot faces upwards and then it goes in. And that's the job done. Let's get the keys. Where's the keys? Did I put the keys there? My keys? Right, come on, baby. Let's try this out. Come out of the way. Around the back. Oh, could I no, 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 we've got to shut the door. Oh. Where are you going? Look. Said. Around the back. Watch that. No, I don't mean watch it like that. Watch it. Right, you ready? Lock. This gets on my nerves. <laughs> right, ready? This is the telling bit. Oh, look, it comes right out. Look, how about that, Thank baby? That. We fixed it. That's another good job done on the ST. Right, we know you're going to have a bit of work done on your car, don't you? I was telling him earlier on. Oh, yeah, somebody said I should have a new car. I don't want a new car. I really like that car. But thank you all the same, but I like that car a lot. There you go. It's a one-owner car. Well, two owners were you, and it comes from the family. And uh, she just loves it. It's an old jalopy, as many of you would call it. But uh, the roof lining's coming out. She didn't want me to bother doing that, did you? But I'm going to do it, aren't I? Oh. Makes a video, doesn't it? It's a lovely drive. But, yeah, thank you. I've just had somebody on the phone talking to me. Can you send me the link when it's roof video's done because they want to do theirs? Who's that then? Accountant. Oh, the accountant? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Right, well, you're going to have to have a cylinder head off. I won't do that I yet. I haven't got a clue what a cylinder head the is. The big top part of the engine, baby. Yeah. It's a lot of work. You won't be able to drive it for a couple of days or maybe oh even a God, week. Oh, my God, I'll have to drive this. So you can drive the beast. I'll tell you what, though, look. <laughs> look. Oh, oh, what way is it? Happy days. Right, well, thanks very much, folks. Hope you've uh, enjoyed this little tinkering about video on the Mondo and also showed you a bit on that as well. And we've seen Crap It Man. No, he's not Crap It Man no, anymore, is he? Project Man. Project Man now. And, he's uh, not Crap It Man. Hey? Anyway. My son, don't call him Shout, Crap It He's man. our son, not your son. No, don't our, call him I, crap I had man. a 50% share in producing him. <laughs> I've done 75% of the work. I grew him. Well, it depends what way you look at it, doesn't it? <laughs> you just said a little thing to me. Unbelievable. Right, we're going to go now, folks. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. And until then, bye for now. Bye. Come on, baby, get that kettle on. I was going to say that being Oh, I'd love a cup of tea.